Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this, re- this week's roundtable podcast, small, intimate group again. But we got the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Good to see you. You know, next week now, Thanksgiving is already coming on by the time you're listening to this. But we're recording this two days before Thanksgiving. Mike, I just want to say I'm very grateful for you. You know, that, that, that's, I, I feel great about that because I feel, feel a lot of uh, Scott Bosman love lately, especially on yesterday's live broadcast. So to hear you publicly say that, oh, word for the glass, you probably see tears blowing up. I really appreciate it. You know, and, and I, I just wanted to do that because I knew about that yesterday. So, you know, speaking of Scott Bosman, we get the dude buddy, the nightcap OG. Scott Bossman. <clears throat> I'm feeling the love as always, Mark. I'm glad to be here. You get the virtual hug. I'm grateful for you, buddy. Uh, and of you. course, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa. He's got his own rap song. Have you guys listened to this rap song on SoundCloud? Tate Litchfield, how are you? I'm good. I was going to say, like, from now on, maybe we could just play a little snip of that and I could just come in. You know, maybe I need to get a, uh, like a big boom box for my shoulder. When you come, when you introduce me, I'll just hit play, let it blast out for a second and then turn it off. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I know what I'm doing on Black Friday. And of course, my gratitude for you knows no bounds. And last but not least, we got the brain, the professor, Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net, LandMoto.com. You're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. PostingDomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. And you know, I don't even need to tell you how much I'm grateful for you. I pretty much vox it every day. It's just, it's, it's annoying. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the feelings are the same, Mark. Well, I, I appreciate it. And I thought that since we're coming off of Thanksgiving or going into Thanksgiving, I thought it'd be an interesting topic just to talk about which aspects of the land business, like that lifestyle you're most grateful for. I know we're all grateful for so many pieces of what the land business and financial freedom and this passive income provides us as far as you know, solving our money problems, solving our time problems. But I'd love to just get a little bit more personal and intimate about your lives and find out what are you most grateful for having those, having that time and that money to live your best life. I mean, we might as well start off with the Zen master. Yes. So to me, I mean, you've hit it on the head when you say time freedom, the fact that every day, um, you know, everybody knows I still work the fire department, but I'm blessed with a great schedule there, you know, 24 hour shifts, but you know, as far as every other day of the week, uh, it's just basically do whatever I want, whenever I want. And, you know, I'm just super grateful, Mark. I tell people all the time, you know, I, I came to this business close to five years ago. Um, you know, a close friend of mine introduced me to you and I was buried in debt. And I remember meeting you out in, uh, um, in Arizona and just taking back. I always tell people the same thing. You know, you're authentic, you're real. I mean, everybody hears you on the podcast here. You know, is this really how Mark is? Or is he just putting on some show? I was just taken back. You were very authentic. And I knew that we had something that could lift that weight off our shoulders. So first and foremost, like the time freedom, but also the fact that I don't feel the burden that weight. That debt can be crushing. And if anybody out there is suffering from any type of debt, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It, it affects you on all levels of your life. And uh, so I guess I did say this to start out with the time freedom, but really just to be free of that, to realize that, you know, I am debt free, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, I don't have that immense pressure on me anymore and I can go out and just, you know, I don't, I don't live a very luxurious life, Mark, but I live it the way that I want. And I'm, I'm very happy and blessed. I, Mike I'm, Zaner, I, I'm not, by, by the way, don't tell me you're not living a luxurious life. <laughs> Walk us through your luxurious morning. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's pure on luxury. Yes, it's true. Every morning, I, and after this, I get them grateful. I go to the, to the gym every morning with my wife and we do a workout. I work out just enough so I can enjoy the sauna and the cold shower, which by the way is getting more difficult this time. Uh, I was in the cold shower today and, every, and I'm like, you know, I kind of, 
it makes you scream a little bit. I get all the guys looking at me like, what's going on? Like, cold showers, they're good for you, you know? But then into the sauna and, and then uh, the steam room and all, it's, it's a great morning. And then we get breakfast. And so, yeah, about 11 o'clock or so, I get back to the, to the office. But yes, Mark, it, that is, to be able to do that pretty much, I always wonder what they think that I do, because mostly it's like older, like retired guys in there, and they look kind of like, what does this guy do? You know, is he, you know, but. I don't know. I, it's it's very. I feel very blessed. Yes, it's not luxurious. That that, that that's so. Awesome. Are you kidding me? There's Fortune 500 CEOs. They got to be in that office by seven in the morning. They're not doing that. They're not getting the saw and a shave. We get spoiled, I guess, in this business, Mark. We get spoiled by our returns. People think we're making them up sometimes, right? I, I talk to people on the phone. I know this sounds. I know this sounds fictitious when we say we make this type of returns, but until you experience it. Um, you just have to experience it to know that it's real. So, yeah, I mean, gratitude all around, though, Mark. I, 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 I just think that this is something that anybody can do. There's nothing special about a blue-collar firefighter other than I just follow the recipe. And I feel that anybody out there, if they're willing to stick through it, I mean, it's, you always say it's simple, but it's not easy. And the part that's not easy is consistency. But, you know, we go through flights, we learn how to keep consistent because you set up systems. You have other, how do you stay consistent? You have other people do it for you. That way, if you're not doing it, it's still getting done. So it's extremely grateful at the end of the day for all of this. So I don't want to, I want to make sure that comes across over and over again. It's just blessed and grateful to have met uh, you and have this opportunity. No, yeah, absolutely. I think you're being a little humble, Mike, because <laughs> you are special. There is something very special about you. And, um, if you don't know it, then you've got to come to boot camp. And the next boot camp is January 10th through 12th in San Antonio. We do have seats left. We're all going to be there, including Mimi, including Eric. And um, then you can come to me at the break and be like, yeah, you're right. I met Zeno. He is, he is special. <laughs> um, speaking of extremely special, dude buddy, a sober dude buddy, which is always special. You make it sound like Scott it's Boston, rare. You... <laughs> I mean, I go on those nightcaps. They, you know, <laughs> you, Forbes, Zeno, it just starts to devolve around that 30 minute mark. Yeah, we should put a 30 minute time limit on that, I think. No, it's great. But... It's great. So um, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you got to check out Nightcap with Scott and Mike and Matt. And uh, they have a cocktail, they have some fun, lots of land investing education, along with just, um, you know, the camaraderie and the community and, you know, everybody's kind of chatting in there. It's, it's really a, a phenomenal way to blow off some steam and not feel alone in your land investing. Um, Scott Bossman, which aspect of land investing are you most grateful for? How is that equated to, in your life? I mean, I have a top 10 list and I could, I could go over all of them, but um, I was thinking here, uh, a, a few of the top things for me are, you know, I'm just not rushed anymore. Like when you're working the grind, when you're working eight to five and you got to get kids to school in the morning and you got to get them home in the afternoon and you got to have dinner ready. And I don't know, I was thinking about it the other day. It's just, it's like a godsend to be not so rushed all the time. Do I still have to get kids to school in the morning? Yes. But I guess I can do that in my sweatpants and come home and sit down at my computer and, and play in my land business uh, or talk to people who are, you know, talk to people about land investing. And I'm very passionate about that because it's changed my life. So, so there's that part, just that sense of, again, time freedom. Uh, there's the fact that, you know, this summer was my first summer home, not working a job in probably 24 years. Uh, and I was able to go golfing on a Monday with my son and go fishing on a Thursday with my other son and to be able to do these things with my boys that I was never able to do before. Um, and you know, there, there's that aspect of it, the family, it, it has improved my family relationships. Uh, and then there is the, just the financial security, knowing that if something were to happen, uh, 
and I know all of us can speak to this, uh, but if something were to happen uh, and I had to put my land business on hold for a month or a couple months, um, I'm going to be okay. So it's, it's given me so much. And like I said, I could go on and on and on, but those are some of the key things uh, for me that have made just a, a major, major difference in my life along with just the community because I've met some really amazing people and made some really amazing friends. Wow. That, uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a little emotional just, just listening to it. Um, you know, and I can see Scott Todd's like, well, of course you are. Cause you're a Mac guy, us surface people, you know, we don't really do <laughs> feelings, but you know, it, it, it's, it, you know, I, I can feel it. And, um, it's, it, it's really just amazing. And I, I think for me, like, it's amazing just to be the witness of it. And I remember having that call with you when you were going to quit your job and you, you know, I'm the one that kind of pushed you, right? You did. I mean, I was, I was nervous to do that. I, uh, it's just, you know, when you've been doing something for 20 years and that's all you know, and you come from a family where that's all they know, because farmers and doctors and lawyers and nurses and teachers all trade their time for, for money. And that's what I've done in my entire life. And I'm about to go on this venture. Um, it, you know, I needed a little push and uh, it was the best push I've ever gotten. Other than going into coaching a few years ago, you pushed me, my wife and you pushed me into that. And I should say I'm thankful for Scott Todd because he was my coach a few years ago. Uh, there's some love for you, Scott Todd. But, uh, oh, but yeah. Love for you too, Bossman. <laughs> it's just, you know, uh, I, Scott, you, you say this all the time. There needs to be some fear uh, in your big decisions uh, because those, that's what moves you forward. And was I fearful going into coaching? Yes. Was I not fearful, uncomfortable? Let's put it that way. You need to feel a little bit of discomfort. So was I a little uncomfortable going, in, going to coaching? Yes. Did it change my life? Yes. Was I uncomfortable quitting my job? Yes. But has it changed my life? Yes. And that's just, that's what it's brought me. Yeah. Um, amazing. Amazing. Tate Litchfield, that's a tough one to follow, man. Yeah. I was going to say, geez. Uh, you know, what am I most grateful for? Obviously the, the money that this business creates, um, I'm grateful for that, but, uh, after all said and done, uh, it's allowed me to really spend time on things that I want to, right? And, and for the most part, that includes my health, right? I'm able to focus on maintaining a healthy uh, lifestyle, which is, which is important because your health is wealth, right? As the phrase goes. So I'm really grateful for the time with a young family. Um, it allows me to kind of be a, a present dad. Um, I don't miss milestones, which is I'm really grateful for that. Uh, I get to go to dance practices and, and these kind of activities that my, my daughter finds interesting. And I love it. I love being the only dad who goes to scissors classes, right? Like, I mean, arts and craft, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's a fun thing that I'm proud of. And the time, the flexibility, the ability to provide for my family, it's all grateful. For. So in reality, I'm just, I'm grateful for the business. I'm grateful for all of it. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, no, that, that that's amazing. And I, I, I can only imagine what uh, the, is that Daisy? Yeah, sorry. She, uh, she's right on cue. Decided, get her, get her the mic, man. In, uh, she, that would be a loud podcast. Let me just tell all of our listeners really loud. Yeah, I, I can imagine what the other moms, like after they see you and you're interacting with your daughter and they're exhausted and their husbands come home late and I can only imagine how much these dads loathe you or the idea of you. And yeah. they're like, Wait, what do you mean? This guy's unemployed. How, well, how is he even there? You know, it's funny because uh, my wife will go out and she'll be with her friends. And, and last week she was out and uh, they had a girls night and there was someone that she didn't know who attended. And basically long story short, they, they started talking about their husbands and my wife's like, Oh, my husband, he's up. He's an investor is what we tell everybody because land investing just means nothing to no one. So we just tell everybody I'm an investor and they're like, oh, great. Where does he work? And, uh, he works in the garage Mahal at our house. And he only works a couple hours a day. And 
she's like, I, I kind of caught myself mid sentence because I could see these people thinking, yeah, right. Yeah, right. He doesn't, he doesn't really work like that. And I hate you, you know, that that's just wrong. And you know, <laughs> it made me happy. It, it's a, it's a great thing. And now that we've lived this lifestyle for so long, we, we joke that like, no, I could, I could never go back to a real job where I left my house and had to wear, you know, a proper attire most days of the week. I mean, yeah, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for seriously, uh, the time I get to spend helping out because it's a lot of work to be a mom that goes out for all the moms out there. So I'm grateful yeah. to be able to help. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Todd. How about you? Man, what, what is there left? We've talked about the money. We talked about the time. We talked about the relationships. We talked about everything, right? Like, you know, I mean, we, you know what we didn't talk about? We didn't what? talk about owning a plane. <laughs> Flying like a bird. Okay. We didn't Flying talk about that. like a but, freaking bird. And but he's actually going freedom, to be. Right? It's a he, combination now, of all. He's now Captain Todd for the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, he's, Mark, he's, here's. Here's the thing though, like this is what's cool is that the, this bit, the, okay, first of all, let, let me tell you what I'm most grateful for. What I'm most grateful for about this business is the fact that I was able to replace my income in as short of a period as I did. And you and I just did a podcast with somebody that will come out, you know, much, much later on. And she was talking about how she started in real estate investing in 2007 and she just retired this year let's just do the math real fast 12 years 12 years for her to retire doing apartment buildings multifamily, and that's fantastic for her okay like that's great i'm happy for her but if i had to wait 12 years it would have been miserable okay it's 12 years of misery and the people that are doing this business full time that we have kind of retired they're not taking 12 years to do it. I, I replaced my income in 17 months and three days. I mean, I haven't even been doing this business for five years. Like, oh, I, I just got past the five year mark. Okay. Last month was five years. So it doesn't take five years. It doesn't take 12 years. You can, if you're going the path, but it really the speed that you go is up to you. But if you have that burning desire to get out of whatever you're doing and go do something else, well, man, you can do it. Okay. Like we've seen people, you know, quit their jobs in 12 months. And that is so dang cool. Uh, you know, we have a coaching student. He quit his job in, I think, about 12 months. And his wife's still doing some work uh, part-time. But you know what? She's having fun with it. She's not, she's not upset about it. That they're, they're living the dream that they want. They're living the best life that they want. And it's possible with this business. Now, not everybody can do it in 12 months, right? Like, that's the thing is you have to have a real, realistic expectation time frame. However, the, 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 the message here is that you, this is a business. I'm thankful for that this is a business that has allowed like myself and others to enjoy the life that they want on their own kind of time frame, doing what they want. And that's the coolest thing to me about this business. And then it allows you to do things that you want to do to, to give back to the community, to give back to mankind. You, it's not all about, you know, me. It's about living, living and being a better person because you have the time freedom to do it. You have the economic freedom to help other people. And you know what, when, when you can do that, man, life all of a sudden gets a lot more better than just, you know, everything's about me. Wow, well, you've all stolen my gratitude list, by the way. So thanks for that, Scott Todd. You're welcome. I mean, leave it to a surface user to to do that. But you know, all, all joke, all joking aside, um, is it okay, Scott, if I tell the story about yeah. your, so I mean, for me, like this is, this is kind of amazing because I don't think Scott, if you were working at your job, you would have had the time or the resources to even do this, but we're on Voxer and we're, we're looking at a picture of these two beautiful dogs. And Scott is walking us through the story of how he flew from Florida to Georgia, picks up the two dogs, saves their freaking lives, and brings them to the Humane Society in Florida. And I made a joke, and I, you know, 
Like he was the Oster Schindler of, of dogs. If you haven't watched Schindler's List, you don't get the joke. But essentially, I mean, talk about, you know, that feeling of being able to make that big an impact um, on so, on, not just in the dog's lives, obviously, but, you know, the people that were able to, you know, that, that group that, hey, we found these two dogs. These are two bonded dogs that really loved each other. Somebody took the time and spent the money to save their lives. I mean, it's the whole thing is just very special. And then when those, li when those dogs get adopted, they would have been adopted. Like think about all the joy those dogs are going to provide that new family all because of your efforts. And I don't, and I'm making the argument that none of those efforts probably could have been made if not for what you've done in the land business. And that's true because I mean, I would have never had the, the time freedom or the economic freedom to even go learn how to fly in the first place or do anything else. Right. Like that, there's that one piece. Right. And so my, my wife was on that flight with me. She had a great time. You want to talk about like a shared experience, you know, the, the day we flew to Georgia and my wife's already like, okay, when are we going again? So, you know, it won't be a one and done thing, but uh, it, it was definitely fulfilling to be able to, uh, to see these dogs uh, make the next step of their journey is really kind of cool because they, the area that they come out of, there's a lot of, a lot of dogs out there that um, I think in the last, they told us that in the last, in the first 19 days of November, they had uh, received to the Humane Society 60 dogs, 60 dogs in this small little town. And they don't have the capacity to, to do anything with these dogs. So, you know, these dogs were, basically on death row, if you will. So it was nice to be able to sa save these dogs and bring joy to somebody else. Yeah, just, just amazing. And I, so I've really been kind of thinking about my answers. You guys are all talking. What I'm, I'm so grateful for so many things and everything you guys were talking about, I'm super, super grateful for. Um, and when I was younger, I was Tate. And then as I was, you know, going through my career, I, you know, I felt like what Scott felt like being able to get out of my job in 18 months. And then to be able to spend time with my loved ones, like, uh, you know, that just that morning routine, like what Zeno was saying and, and in Boston being able to have those special moments throughout the week with my family. I've, I've experienced all of those things. So today, I think what I'm most grateful for is the land geek community and being able to live vicariously now through other people's success. So just being on the Facebook yesterday with, uh, you know, the dude buddy and the Zen master, I don't know where Nick Ringling's like, yeah, you know, I'm eight months out of flight school. I think he made $187,000. Is that right guys? Wait, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry. Yeah, he said $187,000 profit since uh, since ending flight school. Yeah, I mean, and Paul Brewer's like, yeah, I paid for flight school tuition in one, my first deal. Uh, someone, who else said that? Josh Deal, same thing. Josh, I mean, this is just out of the blue. Like, we're not asking them to go on and, and do this. And I think for me, um, hearing these stories of success, you know, like a Tyler and Jen Kelly, I feel like now I can really die in peace, at least professionally. Like I've made enough of an impact um, to do that. I think having that ability to make an impact in other people's lives, uh, I'm most grateful for. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, re that's really it for me. I, I love it. I, I kind of, you know, one of my favorite movies is Groundhog Day. And at the very end of Groundhog Day, you see how, how the main character evolves from, you know, this narcissist and then going like this, like this whole thing. And it's all about other people, just this um, extreme giving. And I want to get to that point of just extreme giving every single day. It takes a lot of energy, but... I, I want to try it. I don't know. So I think that that's, that's for me. Um, all right. So real quickly, as we get to, towards the end of the podcast, 
well, what's everyone eating? What's on the uh, on the menu? Tate Litchfield, what do you got? Uh, we're gonna have uh, a true smorgasbord of options. We'll have a couple different turkeys. Uh, we're going deep fried this year, so that'll be delicious. Uh, you know, have a ham, the potatoes, all the sides, but you know, dessert's the main attraction, right? We're gonna have anything from pecan pie to pumpkin pie, all the way up, apple pie, everything homemade. It's a, it's a good, good few days in the Litchfield house to eat. Nice, that's really nice. Um, now, is it appropriate to wear sweatpants so that you can eat as much as possible and not feel uncomfortable in the you know, household? Or are you guys listen, more formal? Oh no, we're, we're casual. We're gonna have, we heat the pool, so we'll be in swimsuits. So it's, it's all good, man. Nice. Thank you. However you make it. Nice. I'm going to guess Scott Bossman. It's all about the deep fried cheese curds, but I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, actually that we have a couple traditions, uh, food wise. One is Lefsa. Or if you've ever heard of Lefsa, it's a, it's a Norwegian, um, basically a kind of rolled out potato, uh, tortilla you put sugar and uh, butter on it it's like a mm. norwegian pastry made out of potatoes so that's a that's a tradition and then i have to have pickled herring in honor of my grandpa on a saltine cracker along with all of the rest of the amazing food very very nice how about you mike zeno uh well since most of the kids were older we were together uh we had a meal out at the irish pub yesterday, day before, two days ago. So on Thanksgiving, it'll probably be just uh, Laura and Sarah and myself. We'll visit my aunt and uncle, then we'll go get some Chinese and watch a movie. So it's going to be a little, little, little different, but quite nice. enjoyable. I'm not big on the turkey myself. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you what we're having. We're not, we're not big on the turkey either. Scott Todd, how about you? Uh, the, the traditional Thanksgiving, man, you know, turkey and all, all the fixings. Yeah. So it'd be a good day. Yeah, the whole family? Uh, yeah, we'll actually have it at my uh, sister-in-law's house, and everybody's coming. Yeah, I tell you what, that's a big win when you don't have to host it. Yeah, I think, I think Christmas is here, though. Oh, okay, well, but I think that's, well, I don't know. It's a lot of people for Christmas. Yeah, I, um, yeah, for sure. And for those of you that are getting together with your families, this is the time of year. Put the fun back in dysfunctional. Don't discuss politics. <laughs> Let it go. Okay. Focus only on family and the tradition and the food um, and all that. If, just let it go. You know, you know who you are if you're listening to this and you're smiling. Okay. Um, so this year, uh, my son is in from uh, college for the first time. He's a freshman. So it's really, really special to um, be able to micromanage him and, and really just, you know, try to parent him when he does not want to be parented. And just the feeling of, it's called like Thanksgiving resentment. I, you know, like I'm a man now, you can't tell me what to do. And um, that, that part has been super enjoyable for me. No, I, actually, it's great having him home. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, but there have been a few little tiffs here and there, like, wait a second. You're not totally free. Like, come on. But anyways, uh, my wife is a great cook, and she is making Cornish hen. So it's, uh, wow. it's, it's, high, it's highbrow Thanksgiving this year. Wow, look at that. That yeah. sounds good. Fancy. It's fancy. It's phenomenal with all the other fixings. So very excited about that for sure. And, um, you know, we always have around the house this time of year, the Trader Joe's Kringle. If you haven't had that, it is just a round ball of goodness. Kringle? The Kringle. Could look that up. R Racine, yeah. Wisconsin, they manufacture it. The Boston, you, have you had the Kringle? What's that? Is it Kringle or Kringla? 
Is it Kringle? It could be Kringle. It's like Kringle. Kringle, okay. Is it a Christmas item, a Chris Kringle? There is a I Swedish Kringla as well. It, it is a, it is a uh, circle of goodness. A pure Crunchy? sugary cracker? It's a cracker. It's a cracker. No, it's not. It's not a cracker. Mike, just look at the picture. It's much, it looks much better than a cracker, man. All right. So even though this is um, after Thanksgiving, we do want to wish everyone a Thanksgiving. And I am so grateful for our community, for all of you. And um, thank you so much. So, of course, in the spirit of giving, Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right, Mark. So I thought that we had this problem solved a few weeks ago because Mimi and Eric were not on the call and we asked everybody to tag them on Facebook and ask them to come back to give us the new, correct, like good tips of the week. So my tip of the week, hopefully will drive people to go and like get them back for some real functional stuff. And it's called the database of nachos.com. <laughs> which you can find the great nachos all around your house or all around your area. So you never have to worry about not having the best nachos ever. And it was so great that, that Mark knocked his microphone down and everything. This is so oh, exciting for me. Oh, this was released. This is, this is great. This is really a solid, this might be air table. This is awesome. This, this is, this is, like Airtable, Smartsheet, and uh, gosh, GeekPay.io combined. Holy cow. Look at I mean, this. you know. The nearest nachos for me are like 250 miles away. What? 150 <laughs> miles away. 250. Ooh, I got 250. nothing. 250. Jeez. Got nothing. Yeah, Boston, once you're, once you're an empty nester, it's time to move west, my friend. Yes. Like I, I'm surrounded by nachos. Yeah, me I got too. Nothing. Oh wow! I'm I'm hungry. Hungry. It's all over the place. Oh wait a second. <laughs> they got Taco Bell on here. Does Taco I Bell? Do have, yeah, I just clicked on Taco Bell too. That doesn't count. Oh, this no. is Tony Grigio. If you're listening to this, listen, do not send just, us a Taco Bell gift card. Listen, it does say. It's the database of nachos. It doesn't say that they're the best nachos. It just says the database of nachos. If you need to find nachos around you because you have a nacho emergency, <laughs> then this is the place to go. A nacho. Now, this is real life improvement stuff here because you'll never be far from knowing where to go get nachos. Oh, my gosh. Even Cheesecake Factory popped up. No, it didn't. It did. I swear. I'm clicking around here. Well, I thought this was a, a great round table. Um, a little light, but important, I think, you know, once in a while to, to go, you know, we're going to start talking about the next few podcasts about scaling, but so it's nice to have a little break from that. Um, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Just learn more, go to thelangeek.com forward slash training and see how those 16 weeks will transform your life, uh, you will get up the mountain of land vesting quickly, safely, and efficiently with your Land Geek Sherpa, Scott Todd. Um, also, give us some love. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit, as well as the new wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. All right. Guys, are we ready? Do it. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. By, by, by the way, Kringle is nothing more like a ripoff from the German kolache, which is, it's, it's like a pastry. I just looked that up and I look up, look up kolache. It, it's like Trader Joe's is ripping off the German's kolache. Have you been to Trader Joe's, Mike? They rip off everybody. That's what they do. <laughs> when we went to boot camp one, a few years ago, we had to drive into a certain town. We would drive from Houston out to San Antonio just to get this 
Weekles, it was called. And they had kolaches. And it's basically, I couldn't wait to get there. It was just basically a gas station that made danishes. <laughs> was great. By, like, by yes, the way, I'm, I'm, cl I'm clicking around the database of nachos. Domino's popped up. Freaking Domino's sells nachos? What? I mean, what, what constitutes a nacho now? Well, and, and nachos bread. and pizza are the same shape, technically. The chip. I mean, that's, that's crazy. What, what, by the way, what makes a great nacho? Like, I, I think I know. And yes, yeah, Domino's the, does have nachos. They do have nachos. Some people make nachos and they're not crispy, which is a violation of nachos, I believe. I, okay, number one, it has to be crispy. I think number two, you need to have the proper ratio of refi, refried bean or black bean to cheese and protein. Like, I want a little bit of bean in every bite. I don't want just like a little bit of cheese and all, and all you know, not like just tortilla. Chip. So wait, are you saying you're opposed to nacho cheese? Okay, it depends on the nacho cheese. I do like not the like cheap the stuff, park. the good stuff. No, I don't like the ballpark Velveeta nacho <laughs> cheese. I want, I want like melted real Wisconsin cheese, perhaps a blend. And I want guacamole on it. And here I thought I was a cheese snob. In sour cream. Oh, you are though. I am a cheese snob, but I mean, you got to admit, there's something good about just liquid cheese in like a hockey game situation you're just dunking your chips into it and eating them and you're just not even caring you end up on the jumbotron cheese all over your mouth and you're like man whatever this is you good. love cheese whiz i don't i don't love it but i'm not above is that it even cheese i don't even know that's <laughs> probably not <laughs> just some yellow I mean, substance i mean this is this is so crazy tate considering you have high standards with like everything. And then when it comes to cheese, it's like, let's just throw standards out the window. Velveeta, <laughs> here we come. No, it's I'm, fine I don't cheese. eat Velveeta. I don't eat Velveeta, but I mean. If I put it on a tortilla, you will. Tortilla chip. Uh, you might have, uh, you might got me there. I don't know. It's gotta be the right environment too, right? Like, I don't know. You know, I, I feel like, I, I feel like these, these, yeah. These lower quality cheeses are like the surface of nachos. Mm. Yeah, you make a good oh, oh. good point there. Very good oh, point. Boy. You know, they look shredded good, Velveeta. No one... Shredded Velveeta is like the basis of all Thanksgiving casseroles here in the Midwest. E. I mean, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. I really don't like Velveeta. What what about the Velveeta mac and cheese? No? No. Oh, yeah. hmm. Hmm. You know what you know who has good mac and cheese? I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit it. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Chick with, with, yeah, they just came out with a new mac and cheese. And uh, just for fun, we ordered it. Bless you. Very good. I've had it too. It's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, well, there's a see? there's a restaurant I like to go to that has um, uh, like pork mac and cheese, pulled pork mac and cheese, uh, with the barbecue sauce drizzled on the top of the mac of uh, the pulled pork. But obviously, it's coming down onto the mac and cheese. Oh man, I'd be what's for dinner tonight. Got you another locator, that? Mark. Just texted it over to you. Yeah, I, I saw that. And luckily for me, there's there are no stores in uh, in Scottsdale. And there's a surface store near you. Don't worry. And they'll they'll mail it to your house too. I mean, it's bad enough my son has one. And it was bad enough that my, my oldest was like, you know, Dad, at Kelly School of Business, they make you have a PC because of Excel. That I mean that was an A2 Brute moment for me. We, we all know Tate's typing on one right now. Nope. <laughs> we gotta get Eric Peterson back on the podcast. We, we can't, we can't see that. All I saw was the Surface keyboard. Yes. 
Zayden, yeah, that's the not that's, the key for that's right Mac now. goodness right there. Mac goodness. Me, me, see, Mimi's off PC, but then Eric bounces her out. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody needs yeah. to go on the Facebook group and be like, we miss Mimi and Eric. Please come back on the round table. It's been too long. What'd you do to make them mad? I don't think I did anything. I Who made them mad? Uh, Eric's like oh. full on construction mode right now. I mean, let's admit it, Scott. Who's who's the most controversial roundtable person? He may have had enough of Mark loving so much on Bossman. It may have pushed Maybe. him away. It could have been could have been Mark's constant disrespect for Eric. Ooh, has beaten him up. Has uh, beaten him up. Might have ran him away. Could have been. It could have been. You know, enough Jot Not Pro jokes. <laughs> that that could have been the straw. Uh, yeah, right. Like yeah. You couldn't take it. You broke him. I'm sure, he'll come back one day. One day. I I'll call him, Mark. Don't worry. I'll talk to him. All right. We'll get him. No worries. I'll, I'll fix right. the relationship. I <laughs> no. I, I appreciate you mending fences. Yeah. No. Especially, no worries. especially this time. I feel like this is a time of year where you know you just mend fences, and um, you say the things that you you didn't get all year to say. You know what I mean? My wife's been recording so many Christmas hallmarks. I'm like, it's like, it's like starting to like become like this unconscious thing where I'm, I think I'm a character in one of these shows now. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just nicer. Yeah. yeah. We're a sweater all the time. What you, what you, what, listen, what you don't want to be is you don't want to be the character that's mean to the girl because then the girl like ends up with the nice guy. You don't want to be the mean guy because they're all the same, right? Like the mean guy upsets the girl, the girl finds the nice guy. You gotta be the nice guy. No, it's true. And, and every time, uh, like as a joke, if my, if my wife starts talking to me, I pull out my phone and pretend that I'm on my phone. I'm like, wait, 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 honey. I just need to close this big deal. Um, I really want to get to you. And I'm like, no, nah, just joking. I'm the guy in the first five minutes of the Hallmark. <laughs> And now the rest of the day, I'm going to be like, I'm going to put my flannel shirt on and be like the good yeah. down to earth. The, ru guy. the rugged guy, right? The rugged like, guy. Not the city, not the city slicking deal, deal maker. No, you got the, you got the Scott Bossman out there. The, the rugged guy out there like shoveling the snow for the girl. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Keep your, keep your, your wives away from Zeno and Bossman for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zeno, I, uh, you'd be proud of me, man. I, it was a little cold last night here. It was like 50 degrees. Yeah. So I put, put on my fireman shirt. Went, <laughs> Eat a big fight up. That's it, man. Like, I'm like, well, honey, the fireman's in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> won't be <beeping> detectives. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, if, you, if you're not watching this on video, like, Zeno in Boston has got, like, that cool guy, you know, uh, unshaven look going you know tate scott and i kind of have like the typical normal i can't get that razor to work that's the problem <laughs> okay enough about my razor i'm gonna i'm gonna fly out there i'm gonna give you a in-person tutorial <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking i'm not coming out in this time of year i'm coming out in spring and i'm I getting see, myself some, some clam chowder I think the shark from shark tank got hosed did he, did he not make a good deal with Robert? I don't think he made a good deal in that company. Zeno and I agree. <laughs> I'm better off with a throwaway Bic. <laughs> maybe the problem, Mark. Maybe the problem is us Surface users. We can't figure out how to use the Razor. Maybe that's the problem. Or technology. Well, well maybe. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, like, too, it's like, like, oh my gosh, this is so elegant. This is so nice. Maybe they just don't appreciate the finer things, I think is what it hey, says. You know, you know what's really cool is that when I'm ready to leave this conversation, I can just touch my screen and say, end meeting, that's it. You, you got to go find your mouse. You know, touch screen is like, who cares? Plus, you got germs all over your computer screen now. Mine for well, Steam. your mouse? My mouse? And your my keyboard. trackpad? And you your my keyboard. trackpad? Yeah, your trackpad. It's clean. It's clean. Oh, yeah. I sanitize. Yeah. 
I think I'm going to come to the next episode with half my face shaved with a throwaway bick and half with the other razor, and we could just see the results live. I, it's user error. How much harder it can I push? User I'm error. My skin off. Don't push her. That's the problem. That oh, Bossman's oh, out. Bossman's is he's out. Wow. He's <laughs> just like, like that. This. He had enough I'm of this crap. My, he's like, I'm getting my nachos. That's it. <laughs> Well, it is Nacho I, 30. I, I, it is, it nacho, is nacho, nacho 30. Yeah. Nacho 30. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Good right. movie, by the way. Nacho Libre. Yeah. Great movie. <laughs> Good times. Nacho Libre. <laughs> <laughs>